everybody and welcome back to the Pottery Corner. Um, uh, on the last kiln opening video I um, unpacked some mono printed beakers um, so if you've looked at the kiln opening video you'll remember these um, and the comments <laughs> from all you lovely YouTubers out there um, Katie Walters said please let me have a money printing video and um, Monique in my favourite place Bonaire most beautiful place in the world um, and Cher and quite a lot of others um, Jessica from Pacifica said please 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 do a mono printing um, video so what I thought I would do is again I'm going to chunk this into two parts because it's there's a lot of stuff to cover and I don't want to uh, bamboozle you with very long videos so I thought that I would do a this is kind of the kit and materials that you need to have if you're going to give mono printing a go so mono printing just to um, cap over the top is uh, basically slips and underglazes applied to a clay slab so you roll out a big clay slab and then decorate it with underglazes and slips and then when the slab is finished you cut out um, your pieces so whatever it is that you want to make so these are platters so out of this piece of clay this plat um, this slab of clay for this particular mono print I made these two uh, interconnecting platters, this um, square dish and a wonky pot which actually has sold but, but a wonky pot like, like this. So out of that one slab um, I made four pieces so you need to kind of have an idea of what you want to do with your piece once you've finished mono printing so be ready to use the slab in other words um, and obviously you can put as much or as little decoration on your pieces as you want but I'll actually do the the actual mono printing um, uh, piece on another video but I wanted to let you know some of the bits and pieces that you're going to need if you're going to give it a go so first of all you are going to need to have co um, coloured slip and also um, uh, underglazes uh, you know just normal underglazes and and coloured slip so um, on another video I have already explained how I make my coloured slip so this is my clay body sieved um, into a slip so basically all the bits and pieces all the little crusty bits that you get on your table when you're making I stick them into a plastic bucket actually on the the, the uh, the studio table and put water in it and just let it go down into a slurry and then when the pot fills up I've got a, um, a sieve that fits in the top of the bucket and then I just sieve it through and put it into the old glazed bottles so I keep my old glazed bottles for that purpose um, and then when I want to make a coloured slip um, I use a pigment these are all coloured slips so I make my own from um, coloured pigments um, and I just happened to buy some new ones this week so I thought as I had new ones to make that I would just do a quick this is how I do it so I have my empty glazed bottle onto the scales and I my recipe if you want to call it that for um, coloured slip is 20 grams of this is high fire lead free glaze and body pigment um, so you can use it to marble clay um, you can use it to colour slips and you can also use it to make underglazes so I'm just measuring on the scales reason for measuring on the scales is that if I want to reproduce this colour if it happens to be a particularly fantastic colour and I want to reproduce it I need to know how much stain was it in that part in that um, slip bottle so that's why I am measuring it if you're more of a sort of seat of your pants and do it by eye person don't don't worry about it but you know um, for me if I want to recreate a color if I find I have a particularly good color and I want to recreate it then I there we are 20 grams 
um, then I make sure that I am weighing out what I'm actually putting in to the um, thing. Now, um, I don't want to put the slip onto that pigment because, um, it, because it's powder and the slip is slightly thicker, it doesn't, um, it doesn't incorporate very well and you end up with powdery nobbles in it. So all I do is add a tiny bit of water, probably a tablespoon or thereabouts, and then I just mix the um, pigment into the water so that it's actually soluble. You don't even really need to stir it. Um, so you can see that that is now liquid in there. So I'm going to zero my scales, get my sieve slip that's in um, a bottle already prepared, and then I put 350 grams of sieve slip in. And again, you know, it's not an exact science, but for me, if I give myself a, this is how I did it last time, I've got quite a good chance of recreating that colour if I want to. So that's 350 grams in there. Pop the lid on and give it a really, really good shake to incorporate the pigment into your slip. It doesn't take more than a few fairly vigorous shakes. But this pigment powder, as you can see, is quite a dark purple. And when it's mixed with the slip, you can see it's very, very much lighter. And you can get caught out um, by using too strong a colour on your work if you don't make a test tile of the slip and how it actually comes out once it's glazed. So this is this is a raspberry slip um, and that will be two coats of raspberry slip with a with a transparent over. So I know how that particular slip comes out before I've used it on my piece. OK, so when you're working out what colours you want to use, and I'll go into this a little bit more on the next one, you know, when you're putting your colours together, um, you do actually have the true colour rather than when you look at the slab, it will be much lighter. So um, that is now done. And what I do is I label it with the pigment colour, the amount of stain I've used, the amount of slip I've used so that I know what I've got in the bottle. So that's all ready now to use. OK, so first of all, you need coloured slips um, or indeed underglazes. They work just as well. I have made my own underglazes. I was talking about these in the uh, last video, um, which I made from uh, an underglaze medium that Jane Scott Ceramics is producing. And actually, out of her um, litre of uh, underglazed medium that she sent me, I've probably made about 15 of my own colours. Um, the reason being that I have, I do have a little bit of a problem with buying things. Um, I do have lots of pigment powders and I use them to marble my clay and I use them in slips and I use them in underglazes. So I've got a lot of my own pigments. If you haven't got your own pigments, obviously you could buy coloured underglazed. Um, but for me, using a, 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 um, an underglazed medium and adding my own pigments was great because I've already got all these colours and then I can make my own colours so that I'm not using, again, using commercial, commercially produced things. Right, um, one of the very important things about mono printing is using clay pastels um, and they are really useful um, as you can probably see on this piece, there's a patch of like pink dust here. Um, and also there's a, in fact, there's a better, there's a, a stencil there um, on this particular mug. Um, and uh, when I'm using stencils and things on the uh, monoprinting, I use these, which are basically dried lumps of slip. Simple as that. That's all they are. Um, so this one is um, is my orange slip um, and I've just made it into a little ball and then I use what started life as a tea strainer and has now been coerced into uh, into the studio. So this is just a very, very, very fine um, tea strainer mesh 
Um, something that you would use for icing sugar would be ideal. And then I make my own um, from the coloured slip that I've made. I make my own crayons. Um, so this is just slip poured on, dried out and fashioned into a crayon or whatever. Um, and I have various ways of doing that. In a former life I used to do stained glass so I have these plaster moulds that I used to use for making um, glass canes. So um, obviously that's brilliant for, for making something like that. But a plaster surface, you don't really even need a plaster surface, a surface but obviously your things will take longer to dry if you don't have a plaster surface. And then all I do is that I bung a little pool of, um, of the slip colour onto the plaster and then leave it there for, this has been on here for an hour maybe, perhaps a little bit longer. And you'll see that I'm using wooden um, tools to take things off of plaster because if you get plaster in your work, um, it will explode in the kiln and we don't want that. So always use uh, wooden tools on plaster items. And again, that is just a bit that I've kind of smushed up and I will just roll it lightly. Doesn't, you know, you don't have to be particularly pedantic about it. You can see that it's still a little bit wet because it's coming off on my hands. But I just roll it into a ball and then I'm just going to leave that to dry. And then I have all the, um, the slip colours that I have. I've I'm, I'm probably got mm, quite a few, 20 or, 20 or so. And I have each colour in this box. So they're just dried slip. But if you're going to do mono printing, you're going to need some of those. So you'll need to make some for yourself. So coloured slips, coloured color, slips pastels, which are just dried slip. So that's how I make those. Um, I also make, um, as well as my test tiles for the slips, I, I've made a little plaque so that when I'm monoprinting, I can just refer to the plaque when I want to use these colours so that I know how they come out rather than using the test tiles. So I've just made a little plaque. So this is all, this has all been decorated using these um, slip pastels. Okay, so that one looks like raspberry, so it's probably this one here. So, um, no, actually I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, that's probably the raspberry. But you can see the difference in the colour of the pastel to the colour that it actually comes out. So you don't want to get caught out having things too bright on your work. Right, so that's um, slip and uh, pastels. The other thing that you need, and being a potter, you know, you have masses of, of things that will make texture and what have you in your studios. And I'm sure, I mean, it doesn't have to be a texture tool. It can be something as simple as the bottom of a, of a, of a spoon. Um, but I have various flat textures that I use. So this is fantastic. It's probably one of my favourite pieces of texture. And when I'm mono printing, I put it on the clay at the beginning and then pull it off at the end and it leaves this lovely grid um, on where you can see the clay body between. So that I use quite a lot. Um, I also use Satsuma netting or you know, fruit netting, lemon netting, um, which is absolutely, again, something that you would throw away in the bin. And there are you know, various nets, various colours, various sizes of hole. Um, and this is terrific because you can, you can stretch it whichever way you want it to stretch. And again, I put that on the clay. Just trying to find an example of that for you. Uh, I hope you can see that. On this section here, there's a little bit of netting um, where I've pulled that netting off and you can see the, um, the clay body underneath. So I use that one a lot as well. Um, in fact, there's a better, better example of that on this dish. Okay, so this, this section here where you've got that, um, that netting pattern and it's really easy to use and it's cheap. So um, those are really good things. I also use, if you're a crafter, um, I have things like these, these tissue paper leaves. So, you know, these are just 
individual tissue paper leaves, which again, if I put them on the clay at the beginning, before I add any colour, um, then it leaves the clay body white. So there's one there, as you can see. Uh, just trying to find another example there. Okay, so there's a leaf on there that you can see that has stayed clay body colour. So um, when I'm layering up for monoprinting, I'll use something like that to, just to put a motif on that will stand out. So those are just that's just a little bag of um, tissue paper leaves and spots, and the spots are really useful. I like those. Um, and then I also use stencils. These can be picked up relatively cheaply online. I bought this packet that has, you know, more than numerous. This one's lovely. This is my target. I was talking about that on the last video. Of course, I won't be able to find the one that's got a target on. There it is. Um, which gives you this sort of target pattern, which I really like. So that one is a goodie. I use that one a lot. And this one you'll have seen on my work um, there. That's on there. Um, and I bought this pack of, I don't know how many there are, a dozen or so, um, different uh, patterns on here and this was probably you know a fiver no more than that and that one is the honeycomb that's on the center of there so you can see how I've used that so a pack of stencils or something that you can use um, to to use the uh, pastels on would be useful so um, and also things like combs um, where you you can score the surface um, all of this detail on here that is the sort of the brown color where it's cross hatched has been done with this afro comb so as I say you don't need expensive equipment just a wide tooth comb or or even a, you know a comb that you do your hair with I mean obviously you're not going to use it afterwards for your hair but that type of thing so it doesn't have to be expensive so if you're going to join me on this mono printing journey and may I say I'm warning you now if you start you're going to get addicted um, so if, if you'd like to join me on that journey try and sort of get a few bits and pieces prepared so that you're ready to go when um, I bring out the video on how to actually do do the technique itself so um, it, it's it's really good you can you know use a palette of um, of colours and, and pick out the motifs that you want to use. You can, you know, you can go really graffiti. Um, you can use um, stencils like these where we've got seahorses and lobsters. I mean, that'd be lovely with a, with a fish dish on or, you know, a, a prawn cocktail or something in the summer when you, you, you have entertaining people. So, it's a good, it's a great technique and I love doing it because it's really, um, you can just kind of lose yourself in, in sort of just plastering your slab with decoration, which is lovely. Um, so that's it for today. Um, thank you so much for, um, for tuning in to my channel. I have to say that the last couple of videos, um, you've sent me such lovely comments and I'm so grateful it's just lovely to have the feedback from you um, to know that actually my little videos um, are striking a chord and it's really kind of you to spend the time uh, sending a comment and, and, and watching. So I'm very, very grateful. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Um, there's quite a lot of previous videos that will help you along the way. Um, so we've got part two of the sculptural poppy head uh, video to do. Um, I'm going to do a video on uh, test tiles uh, and how to layer and mix your Amoco glazes. And then third, the one after that will be the monoprinting, actually doing the monoprinting itself. But from this video, get yourselves ready. Get your coloured slip on the go. Get your pastels made. Think about what you've got in your own studio or your, or your hobby shed or whatever that you can use. And as I say, things like this that you can save instead of throwing away um, and just have a look around and see what you can find. So that's it for today. As I say, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. In these times of lockdown, it's been pretty difficult sometimes to drag ourselves 
um, through it and it just seems to be going on and on so it's really nice to have you along and I so appreciate your comments so see you on the next one be good in the meantime and stay safe and thanks so much for watching bye for now